Hello everyone. Welcome to Ritika's online teaching academy. In the previous lecture, we have studied about the C4 cycle. There we have seen that in C4 plants, there is a different mechanism for CO2 fixation. And uh, that helps those plants not to carry out the photorespiration process, which is generally a wasteful process. And that usually occurs in C3 plants. Now today we will discuss about the photorespiration in detail. And uh, now I am going to share my screen with you. Okay, so this is lecture six of photosynthesis. It is photorespiration. So first we will, we have to understand what is photorespiration as it combines two different words, photo plus respiration. Photo means light and respiration as we all know. We have given, uh, scientist has given it uh, respiration name, why? Because it consumes oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. So due to this similarity, the name is respiration is put along with photo. Since this process occurs in the presence of light, hence the full name is photorespiration. This process is also known as C2 photosynthetic or oxidative photosynthesis, uh, photosynthetic carbon cycle. Okay, so this process involves oxygenase activity of Rubisco enzyme, means this enzyme oxygenates RUBP. In the previous lecture, uh, I have talked about the oxygenase activity as well as of carbo carboxylase activity of Rubisco. Rubisco is an enzyme which is found in abundant. Uh, its full name is Rubulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. Hence, this enzyme has both the carboxylase as well as oxygenase activity. In the C3 cycle, we have discussed about its carboxylase activity. While in photorespiration, Rubisco oxygenase activity is involved. So since um, we know that carbon dioxide and oxygen concentration or the ratio is nearly equal in the atmosphere, hence carboxylase activity of Rubisco is more favored in order to synthesize the carbohydrate in the presence of a light or in photosynthesis. But uh, Rubisco, we cannot say it is fully specific for CO2. There is a competition between the carbon dioxide and oxygen for the active site of Rubisco. So when this ratio disturbs, or we can say uh, in every one to three to four turns, this Rubisco shows is its activity for the oxygen, and hence it shows there its oxygenase activity. As the substrate is same for both the carboxylase activity and the oxygenase activity, what is the substrate for that? It is RUBP. RUBP is ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. We are calling it as a wasteful process. Why? Because it requires one ATP and one NADPH molecule of photosynthesis. As we know that in the light reaction of photosynthesis, ATP and NADPH molecules are synthesized. But when those ATP and NADPH are used in such photorespiration process, then uh, it is of no use. Carbohydrate synthesis would be hindered or we can say will, would be decreased to some extent. So this process we can say it is a side reaction of C3 cycle and approximately 25% of ribis, uh, reactions by Rubisco enzyme carry out the oxygenation of RUB. So this reaction produces products which cannot be used in the Calvin cycle. So the products which we get from the photorespirator reactions, they are also not useful or cannot be utilized for the Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle also known as the C3 cycle. And in the C3 plants, it takes place where carbon dioxide is fixed and ultimately the carbohydrate is synthesized. Now, what are the different causes of the photorespiration? Means why this photorespiration occurs in plants, in C3 plants. 
In C4 plants, we have seen that they have a special type of leaf anatomy called as the Kranz anatomy. In the previous lecture, I have talked about it. So their photosynthesis is divided into two different compartments, wonder sheath cells and the mesophyll cells. Okay, so that anatomy itself concentrates more carbon dioxide around the Rubisco enzyme in order to enhance that carboxylase activity of Rubisco. But the first enzyme there is PEP carboxylase that fixes carbon dioxide. And the first product is a four carbon acid that is oxaloacetic acid, which is further processed and uh, goes into the bundle sheath cell where it decarboxylates and um, produces carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide is enters into the Kelvin cycle then. So that is the case with the C4 plants. Here photorespiration occurs in the C3 plants. So what are the different causes of it? First cause is this process occurs when CO2 concentration inside a leaf become low. Means when CO2 is not in sufficient quantity, this process may happen. Why we are saying so? In C3 plants, that Kranz anatomy is not present in order to concentrate more CO2 around the rubisco. So due to the lack of that anatomy, these C3 plants are not capable of mean, uh, neglecting this process. So this process occurs when CO2 concentration inside a leaf become low. And CO2 concentration is also affected by the temperature increase. And the next thing we know that the specificity of the rubisco, we cannot say it is absolutely specific for CO2 only. It, 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 uh, there is a competition between the CO2 and oxygen. And when that oxygen concentration increases, it will show its oxygenase activity. So we can say that once in every three to four turnovers, it catalyzes the reaction between revulose 1,5 bisphosphate and oxygen. Hence, photo, photo respiration would occur. So specificity of rubisco for carbon dioxide decreases with temperature increase relative to oxygen. So as a concentration uh, with the increase of temperature, CO2 concentration decreases. But how it decreases? The CO2, it depends upon the solubility of oxygen and CO2. As the rise in temperature, the solubility of oxygen in the cytoplasm and the stroma of the chloroplast increases. And it is less affected by the increasing temperature than the solubility of CO2. Means as the temperature becomes more, oxygen solubility would increase in the cytoplasm and stroma of the chloroplast. And we know that the, in the stroma of the chloroplast, dark reaction will occur. So dark reaction would involve the synthesis of carbohydrate or would involve the C3 cycle and all. So, when the solubility of oxygen, or you can say oxygen is more in concentration inside the stroma, then photorespiration would occur instead of the uh, normal Kelvin cycle. So in the next slide, we would discuss the full photorespiratory reactions. What are the reactions involved in photorespiration in detail? And that is called as the glycolate pathway. It is also named as glycolate salvage pathway. Why? Because here uh, that uh, RUBP would undergo the oxygenation reaction and will produce the two phosphoglycolate and serine-like molecules which cannot be used or utilized in the Kelvin cycle. Means it saves the products for the photorespiratory reactions, not for the Kelvin cycle. Hence, it is also named as a glycolate salvage pathway. So first, uh, substrate which is RUVP revulose 1,5 bisphosphate, instead of combining with CO2, it would combine with oxygen in the photorespiration. And the first product is the 2 phosphoglycolate, and some minimum amount of 3 phosphoglycerate would also produce. This 3 phosphoglycerate would enter into the Kelvin cycle, while the 2 phosphoglycolate will convert into the glycolate. So uh, before discussing the whole steps in detail, I would first tell you 
that the glycolate pathway or the photorespiratory reactions involves the interactions of three different organelles which are chloroplastostoma peroxisome and mitochondria so first in chloroplastostoma that kelvin cycle takes place or you can say that the substrate for the kelvin cycle is present in the chloroplastostoma in c3 cycle hence that oxygenation reaction or you can say the photorespiration first step would occur in the chloroplastostoma itself so revp combines with oxygen to produce two phosphoglycolate and three phosphoglycerate this three phosphoglycerate would enter into the kelvin cycle while two phosphoglycerate in the presence of the enzyme phosphatase would convert into the glycolate phosphatase what it will do it will release or it will take out one inorganic phosphate from phosphoglycolate and convert into the glycolate this glycolate with the help of transporters then enters into the peroxisome in leaf peroxisomes this glycolate further converts into glyoxylate or you can say it is oxidized with the help of one oxygen molecule in the presence of enzyme glycolic acid oxidase this oxidation will lead to the generation of one h2o2 molecule which is also known as hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide is dangerous but due to its presence in peroxisomes the peroxidase enzymes which are present in peroxisome would render it harmless then that glyoxylate will convert into gly glycine molecule that glycine is produced by a process known as a transamination means an h2 molecule is added here then that glycine will enter into the mitochondria in mitochondrion two molecules of glycine in the presence of the enzyme glycine decarboxylase will release co2 molecule and ammonia molecule and this small uh, reaction also will convert one nad plus into nadh plus h plus molecule so glycine decarboxylase decarboxylase means what it will remove one co2 from the glycine molecule here two glycine molecules are condensed up and will produce the serine after the release of a molecule of co2 and ammonia so you are seeing it here co2 co2 as we ha i have told you in the beginning that in photorespiration is similar to the respiration uh, which occurs in mitochondria mitochondrion by a point that it also produces co2 by consuming oxygen so that co2 is producing in this step in mitochondrion in the glycolate pathway of the uh, photorespiration so that serine now will enter into the peroxisome and will convert into the hydroxy pyruvate this hydroxy pyruvate will now use nadh plus h plus to nad plus molecule in the presence of alpha hydroxy acid reductase it will convert into the glycerin so at this step nadh molecule is used here co2 is coming from the mitochondrion step here one nadh is utilized in the peroxisome in the conversion of hydroxy pyruvate to glycerate molecule now this glycerate molecule will come into the chloroplastostoma and will convert into the three phosphoglycerate at this step you can see phospho means this phospho is adding to the glycerate molecule so we from where this phospho will add to the glycerate it will utilize the atp molecule or you can say atp will give its phosphate group to the glycerate to form three phosphoglycerate so at this step one atp molecule is used so in the beginning as i said that one atp and one nadh molecule would be utilized so these are the two steps and one co2 is uh, molecule would produce in the mitochondrion which is coming from this step and here we can see that two oxygen molecules are utilized one in chloroplastostoma and the other one in the peroxisome so this glycerate after converting into the three phosphoglycerate will now enter into the kelvin cycle 
and will again regenerate the RUVP or ribulose 15 bisphosphate. So in this way, we have seen that this is this photorespiration, which is a side reaction of C3 cycle, and the products uh, of this reaction cannot be utilized in the Kelvin cycle. And also, it is metabolically uh, not uh, uh, beneficial because it utilizes the ATP and NADPH molecule. So it is causing the loss of the energy as well as producing the wasteful products which are not, uh, which are of no use. So this is the uh, whole thing about the photorespiration, which is generally found in the C3 plants but is absent in the C4 and the CAM plants because there they have a different type of anatomy uh, uh, which would help C4 plants not to carry out this photo respiratory processes. So that is, we can say that uh, those are the adaptations in the C4 and CAM plants which are found in hot and dry climates. Hence, due to the lack or absence of this photo respiration, the uh, productivity of C4 plants is more compared to that of the C3 plants. So in next lecture, I will talk about the CAM cycle or Cassiulation acid metabolism pathway. So be with me and do like, share and subscribe my channel in order to get more videos in biology. Thank you.